We thought they'd never work it out. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 TV couples who took several seasons to get together. Who needs space? Because I've got something magnificent right here. <laughs> A picture of space. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be going over the will-they-won't-they they couples on television that took seasons to show us that they will, in fact, start a relationship. We'll be excluding those couples who do hook up early, then break up for most of the series, like the infamous Ross and Rachel. Oh my god, are, are you crying? I just don't see why those two can't work things out! <laughs> Number 10, Richard Castle and Kate Beckett, Castle. The eponymous Rick Castle is a novelist who becomes intrigued by New York police detective Kate Beckett. I've gotten used to you pulling my pigtails. So, he decides to study her for inspiration for his new series, assisting her on cases by using his knowledge of storytelling and characters. The sparks fly constantly between these two, with their witty and tension-filled dialogue being a real highlight to the show. Their chemistry is so good that many assume they're in a relationship before they actually are. You're seriously asking me to your place in the Hamptons? I promise, no funny stuff. Misunderstandings, secrets, other partners, and even a bullet or two serve to keep them apart. But Casket finally happens at the end of season four, though it's far from smooth sailing after that. Becca, what do you want? You. Number nine, Gregory House and Lisa Cuddy, House. Another titular protagonist, Dr. Gregory House, is the limping, ill-tempered genius physician whose maverick inclinations and constant disrespect are a constant headache for his hospital's dean of medicine, Dr. Lisa Cuddy. Stop staring at my ass when you think I'm not looking, showing up at restaurants where I happen to be on a date, and fantasizing about me in the shower. That ship sailed long ago, House. Get over it. Though they clearly irritate each other, there's a definite flirtation that goes along with that annoyance, and they each find the other challenging on many levels. I love you. I wish I didn't. But I can't help it. However, their professional relationship as well as House's inability to be open with other people keeps them from becoming closer. It takes six seasons for them both to lower their barriers and start a real relationship. Unfortunately, House continues to struggle with intimacy, leading to their breakup less than a season later. You, you can't love someone without making yourself open to their problems, their fears. Number eight, Temperance, Bones Brennan, and Seely Booth, Bones. We did it. Buck and Wanda were damn good. Buck was more dashing than you. I mean, Buck drove a motorcycle. Temperance Brennan is a forensic anthropologist who partners with FBI agent Celie Booth to solve cases using her skill set, earning her the nickname Bones from Booth. Good night, Bones. Good night, Booth. The duo is initially quite at odds due to Booth's more personable attitude and Bones' closed-off, logical approach. But they gradually warm to each other. While their attraction is rather obvious and goes on for years filled with sexual tension, it isn't until the end of season six that they hook up, leading to both a relationship and a pregnancy. I'm pregnant. You're the father. Number seven, Amy Santiago and Jake Peralta, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. These two detectives from Brooklyn's fictional precinct couldn't be more different. Amy Santiago is obsessive and a little uptight, while Jake Peralta is lazy and rarely takes anything seriously. Oh, and there is one more rule. No matter what happens, you're not allowed to fall in love with me. Won't be a problem. However, opposites attract, and these two are unable to resist each other forever. You're a great detective, and they'd be lucky to have you. The partners love to tease and compete with each other while also bringing out the best in one another, with Amy motivating Jake to take things more seriously and he helping her loosen up and have fun. It takes until the end of season two for them to finally kiss and admit their feelings, beginning a relationship at the start of season three, albeit not under ideal circumstances. I hope it wasn't a mistake. Hope it wasn't a mistake. Title of your sex tape. <gasps> Title of our sex tape. Number six, Style Stalinsky and Lydia Martin, Teen Wolf. Some romances don't always have a mutual attraction to start with, and that's definitely the case with these two. 
Styles, Stalinsky has had a crush on Lydia Martin since grade school, but she barely knows he exists at first. And I'm also pretty sure that I'm the only one who knows how smart you really are. That changes, however, as the two grow closer due to the supernatural effects of mutual friends and Lydia's gradual discovery that Styles knows her better than most people do. However, the two remain apart for a long time due to reasons mundane, like relationships with other people and supernatural, like erased memories. Just like Alex, you're gonna forget me. I won't. However, it isn't until the show's final season that the pair gets together at last. I didn't say it back. You don't have to. Number 5. Ben Wyatt and Leslie Nope, Parks and Recreation First impressions don't always last, as was the case with this adorable couple. The Pawnee Parks Department's Leslie Nope hates Ben Wyatt at first, due to his audit and proposed cuts, which she sees as heartless. However, Ben proves far from heartless, and the duo soon warm to each other with a very cute mutual crush. He told me that he liked me, and I'm gonna go make out with him right now, on his face. They are reluctant to do anything about it at first, since he's her boss. Oh, well, he's not here. He took off. Okay. Eventually, they begin a secret relationship, and while this doesn't last long, they ultimately decide to rekindle the romance, no matter the consequences. I know how I feel, and I want to be with you. But I'm done steamrolling people. This is how I feel. How do you feel? <sighs> Number 4. Damon Salvatore and Elena Gilbert, The Vampire Diaries not all romances involving vampires are terrible. You know who we mean. You must be Elena. I'm Damon, Stefan's brother. Damon Salvatore at first appears to be a self-absorbed bloodsucker who's only interested in revenge on his brother, whose own romance with Caroline was also a contender for this list. But Elena Gilbert's willingness to stand up to Damon and her ability to see past the front he puts up gradually leads to a friendship and then a romance in season four. I wanted to dance with you today. Their relationship is far from simple thereafter, but that's part of what makes them so captivating. I love you, Damon. <laughs> Number 3. Chandler Bing and Monica Geller, Friends If Ross and Rachel were the top-billed couple of friends, Chandler and Monica are the show's sleeper hit. This is Monica. Hi, I'm Ross's little sister. Okay. The two have known each other for years and demonstrate a clear attraction to each other on several occasions. There's a nuclear holocaust. I'm the last man on earth. Would you go out with me? Eh. However, nothing really materializes, mostly due to the close-knit nature of their group of friends, as well as the unfortunate jellyfish incident. Yet a surprise hookup at the end of season 4 on the eve of Ross's wedding in London leads to a loving and lasting relationship, beating out every other one in the series. You are the most beautiful woman in the room tonight. Really? Are you kidding? You're the most beautiful woman in most rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Number 2. Luke Danes and Lorelai Gilmore, Gilmore Girls I think I'm dating Luke. What? I'm not sure. It's just a possibility. The owner and proprietor of the local diner, Luke Danes initially serves to help Lorelai Gilmore meet her needs for coffee and banter with great alacrity. And this person. <gasps> oh, is it me? Is it me? But over time, she comes to rely on him as a friend and with the potential for more. Though his attraction to her definitely began earlier, judging by his remembrance of their first meeting. You kept this in your wallet? You kept this in your wallet? Eight years. Eight years. Their relationship becomes more than platonic by the end of season four, and while they have several breakups and difficulties thereafter, they ultimately end up happily together. What are you doing? Will you just stand still? Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. He looks nice in a suit. She can handle her scotch. He's my boyfriend. And she's my girlfriend. I want to go all in. Really? In public, all those people? All right. No, no, like all in, like gambling. Okay, I'm so, okay. You traded your ship for me? Hi. Right. Number one, Jim Halpert and Pam Beasley, The Office. These two are so perfect together that everyone can see it. Co-workers and best friends, Jim Halpert and Pam Beasley share a boatload of chemistry and a love of office mischief that's wonderful to watch. I was just, um... I'm in love with you. What? However, Pam is initially engaged to someone else. 
Her inability to return his affections when he confesses to her drives him into another relationship, making her realization of her own feelings complicated. I shouldn't have been with Roy. And there were a lot of reasons to call off my wedding. But the truth is, I didn't care about any of those reasons until I met you. By the third season's end, though, they do eventually get on the same page. While they may not be the couple to take the longest to get together, it certainly felt that way. Yeah, I gave him a ride home because right. we're dating. Wow. There it is. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.